Oh, pretty good. Just, just working away. Honestly, same old. We, um, we've, since we've talked, I mean, I've, op we've opened up Grimsby and, um, yeah, so it's been, it's been pretty busy. Yeah, so when we opened up uh, Porto uh that's it's going to be three years now. I feel like when we spoke, it was maybe, we, it was pretty new, maybe still like six or eight months, I feel like. Yeah. Um, so yeah, since then, I mean, we've just, obviously, uh, you know, the, the, <laughs> the pandemic hit. So we, uh, we, we were always very focused on being an online first kind of retailer and, um, as you know, if you visit our store, we were always more of like a retail focused play more than a food and beverage, you know, sit down kind of uh, business model. So that turned out to be really beneficial for us during the pandemic because we, yeah, we had the, we didn't have anyone kind of come in and be like, oh, I can't sit now. Like my whole kind of 416 coffee experience is ruined, you know? So yeah. it, it didn't really change our consumer behavior, which was important. And we just doubled down on online during that time, like really grew that side of the business. Um, we were able to stay open the whole time because we just did, you know, grab and go bags of coffee and, and coffee beverages. And then, yeah, kind of coming out of the pandemic, we saw the opportunity to open up a store in, in Grimsby. We just thought that that market is kind of ready for, you know, specialty coffee, ready for something new. And so, yeah, we were able to negotiate, obviously, a favorable lease as well during that time, simply because, yeah, no one was negotiating. No one was going after commercial real estate. Um, really, it was still like kind of in the middle of the, the pandemic because that was 2021. Um, so, yeah, so we were able to open up that store. And so we've just been focused on now just focused on kind of refining our systems so that both of the stores can run efficiently with as little like input from me and Carm as, as possible. And then online's been growing exponentially and we're just kind of yeah so we're just kind of consolidating everything building out now systems for our business to run um so me and carm can kind of focus on um like carm can focus more on product development i can focus more on like marketing and expansion and we can kind of divide and conquer now going forward okay, cool. i'm just jotting this down um bear with me here yeah no worries okay i don't think it's been going in Grimsby was uh, definitely like a slower, I actually don't think it was a slower burn. I think it just felt slower because like we were so kind of red hot in port, but um, definitely for the first like few months, it was, it was getting people in, doing product education, um, explaining to people, you know, what we do, why we're different, uh, kind of that we roast our own coffee, talking about kind of the, the benefits of getting freshly roasted coffee and just, yeah, just kind of product education, brand education was the first little bit. I'd say the first six months were like pretty, not even challenging, but just like it was the, it was the grind of getting it up and running. But I'd say now it's, it's really moving in the right direction. It's moving pretty quickly in the right direction. So I'd say the store is doing really well now. The grind. <laughs> uh, sorry, you probably, I don't know, maybe it's just second nature to you and you don't realize it anymore, or maybe I'm just a dork that way and pick up. No, <laughs> that, that is pretty punny. It is, it is. So, uh, yeah, but things are going well. That's awesome. Um, that's, that's great. Um, was, was that always part of the plan to, to expand, to have other, other locations, given, you know, what you were talking about with the online, online and retail focus? Yeah, like for us, I mean, I, I'm not sure who said it, but there was like a famous business quote where it's like, if you're not growing, you're dying. Um, so for us, yeah, the plan was always to strategically build out retail locations and, and kind of translate those retail stores into more, you know, more bag sales. And then obviously 
creating like kind of a 360 immersive experience where a lot of people that are visiting our retail stores are also purchasing products on our online store and getting, you know, following us on social, getting into kind of our world. So the idea is to have, you know, in-store and digital experiences for people to kind of enjoy and, and connect with the brand on a variety of different platforms, including in person. She ran it by, by me as well, and, and I agreed wholeheartedly was, was because you and what you were doing at 416 exemplify the, the Goodman uh, values of, of passion and, and perseverance. Um, I, I'm, just, I'm just wondering, from, from your time at, at Goodman, I mean, was, was any of that in, instilled in, in you, or, or did any of, of what you learned or studied at school maybe um, bring out what was already in you? Uh, a little bit more and, and give you the, the confidence to, to, to be that way and persevere, especially in a, a time like now that's so challenging. Yeah, I think, I think like uh, my time at school, like with Goodman and everything helped in the sense of, well, a couple ways. Number one, it's, I mean, I think if anyone completes uh, any sort of post-secondary degree, there's almost a value in just the completion of it in the sense of, you know, you build like time management skills, you build some sort of discipline with getting things done, kind of that, that way of looking at it, those kind of base level skills to go out into the world and like contribute. And then I would say beyond that, um, you know, I had certain courses that I remember, like I really remember my consumer behavior course and, you know, thinking how crazy it was regarding, uh, like, I remember learning about the lady who taught it, I can't remember her name. She had specialized in, in wine. And she was, I remember her teaching us about like, Oh, like, you know, uh, if people, people are hooked in an MRI or something and they're like drinking wine that was like, they told them it was $10 a bottle and their brain was like kind of lighting up. And then they told them it was $300 a bottle and they're like all the pleasure centers lit up in their brain. And yeah. And it was the same wine and I remember just being fascinated by stuff like that. So I remember like taking those lessons and kind of cataloging those things into my own kind of repertoire and then learning about more of those things on my own time. So I think it, like going to business school was good in the sense that it gave me a very, very general knowledge of kind of the different facets of business, the different things I'd have to encounter as an entrepreneur. And then I was able to kind of examine more deeply the things that I felt I needed to, to, to start a business myself. I think I'm just like, I'm very clear about what I want from like my life. Like I've always wanted to be successful. Kind of, I always saw myself as someone who was going to live a big life. You know what I mean? Like I wanted to achieve. Um, so I think as long as you're clear about what you want, then once you commit yourself to a goal, then you'll, you'll push through any adversity. So for me, yeah, that's probably the biggest thing. Um, just, just a a very clear goal. And then it's just like, okay, like we're going to get there no matter what. And it's also like enjoying, you learn to enjoy the, the day to day of it all. Right. Even when things aren't going maybe the best, you're, you know, content with where you're at because you know where you're trying to go. It, it's all, everything has a purpose, even the setbacks, even the struggles, everything is kind of propelling you towards this, this end goal, this state you're trying to reach. So, so yeah, I'd say that'll keep you as far as perseverance goes a hundred percent. That'll keep you going. And of course, like, you know, a little chip on your shoulder from like all the people you got to, you know, prove wrong and whatnot. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Were there lots of those? 
Oh, a hundred percent. Especially like when we opened up in port. I remember, I remember me and Carm were putting the floor in our Port Luzi store. We had literally like drained our, our accounts to open up the store, um, invested like every dollar we had. So we're sitting there, we're like staining wood. The the sliding doors open. We're kind of out on the sidewalk staining pieces of wood to put up shelves. We're hoping to open in like a week or something. And people would walk by us and kind of look look at us and be like, oh, like, what are you guys opening up here? We're like, oh, it's going to be like a coffee shop. We roast our own coffee. And they'd pretty much like laugh at us and be like, oh, like, you guys know there's a coffee shop down the street, right? And we heard that so, so often. And it's so funny now because, you know, now, of course, you know, it's different. Now people are, oh, my God, good for you. But at the time, yeah, like half the half of the local populace thought we were completely ridiculous for even attempting to open up a coffee shop. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I think like, number one, like winners focus on winning. So you, you don't need to be overly concerned. You have to be aware of what your competition is doing for sure. Um, but yeah, you got to focus on what you're up to. And as long as you focus on taking care of your customers, um, making the best products you can, you know, marketing things the best you can, working as hard as you can, then everything else will take care of itself. But as far as like, yeah, as far as like other coffee shops, competition, things like that, I mean... I don't know. I don't try to like, we, we don't try to follow trends. We try to set trends. So it's like, we just do our own thing and that's it. Yeah, I mean, I think for us, it's just, it's looking at other industries that are doing things differently. I think the worst thing you can do is like, look at our, especially in the coffee industry. I mean, if you took the branding off 90% of the coffee shops or coffee businesses in Ontario or even as far as Canada, they all kind of look the same. If you if you took off the branding, they all look exactly the same. So that's why we've gained a lot of inspiration from other industries that we're into. So me and my dad are big like big car guys. Uh, we're super into. I'm super into like um, fashion. I'm also fascinated by how tech companies run and the business models they use, and um, kind of like just you know culture, streetwear, things like that. So taking inspiration from other industries has helped us kind of give our business a unique kind of look and feel sometimes and even sometimes being unique with our business models and that's just because I like I said I feel like every like 90% of coffee roasters in Ontario if you you could change their branding around and it's it's very much the same thing it everyone kind of argues on the same points you know we have ethically sourced coffee um we stand with the whatever the current thing is and our coffee is really good. And that's like kind of those are the three points that everyone has. So for us, we we just kind of, yeah, we're a little different that way, I'd say. Sorry, what are those three things again? The ethically roast? <laughs> oh, yeah. Everyone says we ethically source coffee. Everyone in the industry. We ethically source coffee. Our coffee's really good. And like whatever the current like social thing is <laughs> it's like we stand with that we're gonna like send money to that and that's like that's it's on repeat so which is fine and that's cool but it's just that's what everyone does in our industry it's the same thing like go look at any roaster that they do the exact same thing
all the coffee shops that I've been in. No, it's 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 very true. So how do you how do you not get caught up in that though? I mean, is there not ever any pressure on the consumer side? Like especially when you talk about you know getting caught up in the 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 cause du jour. You know, is there is there ever sort of that that pressure in, um, to to conform? If you look at if you if you even took like a picture of me and Carm and put us beside like a bunch of people in the industry, we would stand out like a sore thumb. I think we just think very differently about these things, you know. So it's just our our whole kind of um, our belief systems, how we navigate, you know, the business world, very different. And I think our our goals. Once again, it comes back to our goals. Our end goals, I think, are very different than a lot of these a lot of these people's end goals, and even our interests outside of coffee are very different. You know, I always tell people like, I'm, I'm definitely an entrepreneur and I'm very interested in business. Coffee just happens to be the vehicle. And I'm, I'm super passionate about coffee. I love coffee, but if like tomorrow morning coffee was illegal, I'd just be doing some other, I'd be running another business. Whereas I think a lot of people in the industry, you hear them talk about like, um, like the artistic endeavors, music, things like that. And, you know, which is, which is totally cool. That's just not who we are. But I think that translates down to our branding and kind of how we carry ourselves and how the business runs and how things look. So, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, for sure. Like when I think of, about about the brand um, a little bit, you know, even even from the name, but even to to you on social media, I know education is a huge component of, of what you do. I remember your your coffee talks, your <laughs> explanations, and and about pour overs and and everything like like that. Um, are you still doing those as, as regularly? I, I remember you, it felt like a staple during the pandemic. Like there, there's Chris talking about about coffee and. Uh, and educating about about coffee, but I have to be honest, because of Instagram's algorithm, it's like, I feel like I, I see them a lot, and then I don't see them, and then I see them again, and um, are you still still giving those talks pretty regularly? Yeah, we've moved to, I've done like a lot of in-person cupping and stuff, and kind of some more in-person stuff recently, so we're running like cupping classes every Saturday to teach people about coffee at our factory. Those have been, yeah, and those have been really good. Um as far as like more information about coffee, to be honest with you, like I've, I do still chunk them out, but I like now I've almost covered like, I've covered like probably 90% of like the main coffee questions, like the average consumer would have. So sometimes as far as like for more education, I genuinely don't have an idea of what to make. So now I'm like, I make other kinds of content around coffee, but as far as like general information, I'm like, I've done like every brewer, I've done a tutorial on, um, I've done, you know, I've done like explanations of different roasts and varietals and all kinds of stuff like that. So I'm like, now it's, I definitely say the education part's a bit slower just cause I don't, I don't have like too much to make. I've, I've thought about remaking some older videos. Um, now that I just have like some more, I have, like, better camera equipment. I could uh, kind of, like, up the production quality of a lot of it. So I've thought about that. Um, But, yeah, so that's kind of where I've been at now is just, like, kind of seeing, like, what kind of content I want to make next with that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It seems so, and and correct me if I'm wrong, but there's a bit of irreverence to the brand uh, a little bit and and fun, right? It's, like, you know, I, I think about, for example, the video where you were pouring coffee into somebody's mouth while they were lying on the ground. Or oh, that was, that was me on the ground, yeah. <laughs> the ground. Okay. I, yeah, and, uh, and, you know, that, that it's, it's not taking yourself too seriously. Is that, is that pretty fair to, fair to say? Yeah, our, our tagline is fuel for fun. Um, yeah. And the, the idea there is just, like, like pretty, pretty simply, like, what you said. It's just a lot of... I felt like there was a lot of people in the industry and like the kind of the, yeah, the coffee industry was very, could be very like snobby or pretentious and kind of unapproachable. So yeah, we just wanted to make stuff that was like true to us. And like, obviously we can get into the weeds of like 
making a really good pour over or all the like nuanced details that could go into pulling a really good shot of espresso. But I feel like most people just want a coffee that's like they can throw it into their pot brewer and it's going to be pretty damn good. So kind of making content and for both of those people. And like, it doesn't have to be that ser- It can be as serious or not as serious as you want it to be in the sense of like brewing coffee and enjoying coffee. But yeah, the brand's definitely supposed to be fun and like kind of relaxed. I feel like everyone else is like super kind of serious and yeah, really extra about kettle circles and shit. Yeah, right right now we're just um doubling down on kind of online growing our subscription model. Um you know, cleaning up systems just to make sure that everything can kind of run smoothly cuz for a long time I mean, we were me and Carm were like, you know, in store a lot and you know, everything was kind of just we we knew how to do things and that's it. So now it's just like really focusing on refining our systems and creating something that, so that our team can kind of thrive without us. Um and then the goal is to, uh, yeah, probably more like more brick and mortar locations. And as we grow the brick and mortar, I mean, it's growing, it's growing the online reach. Cause I find whenever we open up a store, obviously or that general area explodes in online sales. So it's just like growing out that way. Yeah, yeah, we're still good. Me and Carm, I mean, honestly, we've never really mixed words. Like, if we if we disagree on something, we'll just tell we'll tell the other person that we disagree with it. And I feel like that's the only way to run it. We're we're like truly fifty fifty in the sense there's no like hierarchy of decision making. I mean, obviously, if Carm wants to make a decision about a product, um, I'll give him more like of the benefit of the doubt, the same way he would as if, uh, if I'm making a decision about. Um, you know, something to do with marketing or, or something to do with anything digital pretty much, you know, it's, it's one of those things. So, but yeah, we, we talk, uh, we, you know, we see each other all the time. We're talking about decisions, making decisions at the end of the day, our goals are aligned too. So that's the thing. Like, um, we're both, you know, trying to like build the business, grow the business. So yeah, I mean, it's not wrong. We yell about decisions all the time and scream at each other and shit, but that's just part of it. That's, that's like key to the the communication, I think it's just, it's very open. It's very raw. No one's like beating around the bush. Yeah. 